mortgage payments, credit cards, and tax debts. Living large for these country stars, no matter how famous they were, surely had its downsides. Here's a crappy scenario. You're a singer-songwriter who's written and performed hundreds of songs, some more popular than others. At one point, you plan to let your children inherit the rights to these songs, but sadly, you have to sell them in order to pull yourself out of a deep financial hole. That's exactly what happened to the late, beloved country singer Merle Haggard, who filed for Chapter 11 in 1992 after reportedly being $5 million in debt. I think this is all for my benefit, to stand back and appraise things where nobody can touch me for a little bit. Hopefully, I won't be in there long. The Los Angeles Times reported that a chunk of Haggard's money problems stemmed from tax issues. Rolling Stone said bad business moves and a string of divorces also contributed, as Haggard was married five times. Plus, the singer had a contentious relationship with his label, Curb Records, and accused them of stalling his career. So, in order to help pull himself out of debt, the Oildale, California native sold 600 of his songs to Sony Tree Publishing for over $3 million. And on top of that, he had to sell hundreds of acres of his own personal property. Since releasing her first album, Leave the Light On, country music singer Lori Morgan had cemented her status as a well-established star in the music industry. By 2008, her assets had reportedly grown to between $500,000 and $1 million. Five years prior, she purchased a home in the charming town of Gallatin, Tennessee. Despite her asset growth, Morgan found herself in serious money problems, accumulating millions in debt and ultimately having to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. To make matters more complicated, she made this decision on the heels of filing for divorce from Sammy Kershaw, another famous country singer. SunTrust Bank also came for her home, which was said to be a colossal 4,700 square feet, after owing over $17,000 in mortgage payments. It was the biggest mistake of my life that I didn't watch my own money. And I would say to anybody, you have an accountant that does your money, you audit them. Because one day you're going to wake up and go, what do you mean I don't have any money? Make it, put it away, and save it, because just as quick as you go up, you come back down. Similar to Eddie Montgomery, Sammy Kershaw's business went belly up and got him into all kinds of troubling debt. Kershaw started HotChickens.com in Whites Creek, Tennessee with Lori Morgan before they split in 2007. But when the restaurant closed, the creditors came knocking. The Nashville Post reported that Kershaw's debt indicated in his Chapter 13 filing ranged between $100,000 to $1 million. On top of that, Kershaw, who was dropped by his label Mercury Records in 2000, owed $89,676 in alimony payments to his ex-wife, Kim Kershaw. Those two are gonna fall in love tonight, spend the rest of their life together. Only they don't know it yet. His debt was also accumulated through credit card purchases, bus leases, self-storage costs, and back taxes. On top of that, several vendors sued him for non-payment. Kershaw spoke about his money problems with the boot in 2010, and it seemed like he regretted filing for bankruptcy, saying, I don't recommend bankruptcy to anybody if you can work it out. A lot of people are willing to help and work with you, but sometimes there's a point where even the little bit of help don't help anymore. My advice is to do everything you can to avoid bankruptcy because it is a tough thing to get over. It's a tough thing to start over. Your credit is shot for a long time. There have been times throughout music history when singers used their art to settle a legal matter. In 1978, for example, Marvin Gaye released Here, My Dear and used the royalties to pay alimony to his ex-wife, Anna Gordy Gay. In 1991, in order to pay off a massive tax debt of $16.7 million, Willie Nelson released his LP, The IRS Tapes, Who Will Buy My Memories? The amount was whittled down to $6 million, thanks to Nelson's lawyer. But after the star failed to pay that amount, the feds raided his home in 1990 and seized his assets, including his recording studio, instruments, and other properties. Later, the IRS allowed the country legend to pay off the debt with his Who Will Buy My Memories album, but he needed to sell 4 million copies. Based on the financial split that was agreed upon with those involved in the album, the IRS received just $3.6 million. Thankfully for Nelson, he was able to pay off the remaining debt in the following years. He reminisced with the New York Times in 1991 about the situation, saying, I thought they'd be crazy not to take it. The very fact they see a way to make a lot of money real quick made them go for it. They're not interested in sitting around waiting 10 or 20 years for the money to trickle in. Kenny Rogers, Alan Jackson, and Florida Georgia Line. These are just a few country artists who have opened restaurants. As of 2023, all of their eateries are still open. But sadly, the same cannot be said for Eddie Montgomery's Steakhouse in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. 
Montgomery, who was one half of the country duo Montgomery Gentry, launched the steakhouse in 2009 with his wife, Tracy Noonan. We will basically want to build a stage and then build a restaurant and bar around it. So it's kind of what I did. <laughs> but by 2010, the couple was no longer married. And three years after that, the steakhouse was closed. The business failed as Montgomery had to take out some hefty business loans and, in turn, accumulated $12.7 million of debt. In 2013, he filed for bankruptcy. Whether or not Montgomery could afford his lifestyle is a matter of opinion for those outside of his financial situation. But he and his ex-wife lived in a home in Perryville, Kentucky that sat on 273 acres of land. So it's possible the property was costly to maintain. But that's not the reason the bankruptcy was filed, according to Montgomery's lawyer, Jamie Harris. He said, It is very common with individuals dealing with divorce and business closure to have to seek out bankruptcy trying to maintain a restaurant. 